Hey all, so I've been getting a lot of questions online about uh, how the flywheel fit, the uh, Maracruiser uh, bell housing, and all the um, drive stuff um, with the LS. So I got a video, quick video showing that, uh, how all that stuff fit. I didn't have to use any adapters or anything, it all bolted right in using the 4.8 manual flywheel. And then I got a second video on top of that uh, showing how to do the um, like the shift interrupter. Uh, basically it's an ignition cut um, for the engine so it'll get out of the dog, dog engagement. Uh, I guess, uh, there you go. All right, so here's my rigged up starter set up here for this 5.3 that I'm putting in the boat. So I have to use a manual transmission flywheel out, out of a 4.8 2001 Silverado. Uh, you can get these off AutoZone. I got that for 80 bucks on AutoZone, brand new. I went ahead and uh, put like a black uh, metal etching primer on it to prevent it from rusting. And uh, it fits the drive real good too, it's perfect. So that's what you need for an LS on a drive. And then the starter is either a 5.3 or a 6 liter, like early 2000s. And uh, let's see if it works. Yep, so it seems like it's meshing with the gear teeth correctly and works like it's supposed to. So there you go, you don't have to spend 500 bucks on a freaking marine flywheel. Get one off AutoZone, brand new, 80 bucks. Works just like it's supposed to. All right, so small block Chevy, you can see it was the 5 liter LX, which is the 305 uh, housing right here. Fits on the LS just fine. Uh, the only bolt that's missing is that one. I guess you could tap that and do it, but I don't see a reason to. I mean, it's got the alignment dowel pins in there along with, you know, five bolts it seems pretty good so I don't think that's going anywhere I think that bolt that you need there is really not necessary but yeah no clearance issues no nothing yeah so looking good so all this should mount um, there's the adapter plates LS adapter plates so all of this should mount in there without a problem all right, I've been having some issues with uh, forward and reverse uh, neutral um, engagement um, with the way the Alpha 1 Gen 1 drives work, or Alpha first gen drives, whatever it is. Um, they have dog engagement teeth, so it's easy to go in the gear, but to pull it out, the dog engagement hangs on to the, um, hangs on to the uh, assembly and won't let it pull out uh, of gear uh, if it's under load. So what uh, Miracruiser did is they put a shift interrupter in, which is this guy here. So when the pedal, or I mean the cable has a lot of pressure on it, it moves this assembly either one way or the other. You see when I move it. So when you put pressure on the cable, it hits this switch. And that switch would ground out what would be originally on the caveman engines, a uh, coil. Uh, it would ground out the coil so the engine would stumble. And when the engine stumbles, uh, the engagement teeth that locked into gear would let go. And then you could put it into neutral. Well, how do you do it with an LS engine that has, you know, a coil per plug, uh, multi port fuel injection, all that stuff? Well, what I ended up doing was. Uh, the coil ground wires that were supposed to go to the back of the heads um, you know it has these labels on it on the Terminator X system um, if these are not hooked up to ground the coils are off they shut off so what I ended up doing was I took the two wires the two ground wires uh, where are they yeah, right here I put them together in the spade connector and then I ran uh, wire to a relay which when it's off it's always closed which means that the ground is always attached when the relay has no power going to it and then I took the the coil from the relay that powers a relay I ran it to the interrupter switch so when the interrupter switch is engaged 
the relay actually turns on is engaged and then it disconnects the ground. So it works like the opposite of the way you would normally have a relay hooked up. So you can hear a relay click when I move this back and forth. So when this engages, when it needs to let go of the dog engagement, uh, when this engages, the solenoid, uh, I mean the um, relay clicks, which opens the circuit, makes the engine stumble, and then you can pull it out of gear. And then the positive I just have going to the starter solenoid positive right here that's always on. It doesn't matter if it's always on because the ground is open right now for the relay, so the relay is not on. The relay only turns on when this is engaged, when you're shifting, and shifting under load. So it's really that simple. Um, so one side of the switch on the relay is connected to ground, the other side to the spade connector, and it's always on when the relay is off. It's always switched on. And then when this clicks the relay on, it disconnects the ground from both coils, makes the engine stumble, and that's it. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, so. Gotta clean up some of the wiring here now that I made a mess of with all this stuff. But at least now I have an interrupter with, you know, all the complex systems of the uh, LS with the multi-coil system. I mean, it's, you know, it's not a single coil here that I can play with. It's got multiple, you know, coil per plug. So I'm gonna do the same to the other side and uh, hopefully it'll work. All right, so we're running. Now have it uh, around 7.50 RPM. See what works. Looks like it does. Oop, stalled it. But uh, there you go. So you can hear a relay click. I'm gonna move this. So it looks like we're good to go. It actually worked out. All right, it looks like it's working. So look at the tacks here. So if we put it in gear, obviously that's gonna be easy, but to pull it out is when uh, we have to cut the engines and you'll see the tacks blip when I pull it out. In gear, now I go to pull it out. See them blip and then go back up, we'll go reverse. And then pull it out. See that? There we go. Do it again. In reverse. Pull it out. There we go. So it works. So you could do it with an LS.